The following program is part of a Lower Kuskokwim School District bilingual instructional television project. The original program was produced in the Yupik language. Unakwaniya bit put chamirekan kangu sakya kawuk pakunakwani nunapim chagam sukai chagam sum sukai natang sa. This program is about techniques for trapping blackfish. The winter tundra by surface appearance is a place of little life and little activity. But when a person takes the time to discover what life does exist, it is possible to live one's life utilizing food that the tundra provides. Andrew Chikoyak is 79 years old and has spent his life learning that the land he lives on can provide sustenance. At certain times of the year, the blackfish cannot be found. They are hiding from their predators, the pike and lush. The blackfish hide in the grassy swamp areas. This usually happens during the summer. If you know what to listen for, you can hear them surfacing and feeding in the swamp areas. Oftentimes, the blackfish will get trapped in the marshes and swamps when the water is low. There is an area of floating tundra between the swamp and the river. When the water is high, the vegetation mass floats. When the water is low, the mass rests on the bottom of the swamp. During freeze-up, the blackfish will leave these marsh areas and school in ponds that have outlets to and from the flowing rivers. The blackfish move with the current. The current flow is normally with the river as it flows towards its mouth, but sometimes tidal action causes the current to reverse itself. A blackfish trap is set at a location where there is a small creek or slough providing access from the marsh to the river. The fish will swim out, and when they return, they will swim into the trap. The traditional trap that is used for catching blackfish is made out of driftwood and spruce roots. It takes Andrew Chikoyak about two full days and nights to complete a trap. Mr. Chikoyak uses the length of his forearm to show the width of the mouth of the trap. 
The trap is made from many small strips of wood that are spliced together. The pieces are rarely longer than one foot. The pieces are bound together with thin strips of spruce root that are similar in appearance to leather lacing. <coughs> The end of the trap is formed by carving a small piece of wood and placing it like a plug into the end of the trap and then binding it with the spruce root strips. The tying together of the trap is an intricate process. Knotting and joining the strips takes practice and patience. The spiral binding that holds the parallel strips in shape is split and is formed with pliable spruce root strips. To make the strips pliable, they must be chewed. When the strip is ready to be added to the trap, it is placed on the spiral, like Mr. Jakoyak is showing here, and wrapped around the parallel strips, going around and around, until you get close to the end of the binding. When the binding ends, a new strip is spliced on, and the wrapping activity continues. Tungitlak 
At the end of the trap, there is a little opening. This opening is blocked with a piece of wood that looks like a large needle. This piece of wood, as well as all of the parts of the trap, are carved with tools made especially for the purpose of making a fish trap. This is the tool Mr. Chikoyak uses to make the wooden strips for the trap. He made the tool around 1945. The steel part used to be much wider. The handle is made from a reindeer bone. The reindeer used to be herded in this area. This small tool is used for splitting the roots into strips. You use it as he is showing here. It is also used for shaping the strips. This heavy tool is used on the logs and large roots. The wedge is also used to split the logs and roots. Mr. Chikoyak made his tools for specific purposes. The shaving tool is used to remove the sharp edges from the strips. While working this way, he has blistered his fingers. To prevent this from happening, he cut the finger and thumb out of an old pair of leather gloves and now ties them to his wrist with scraps of cloth and continues working without blistering his fingers. This is what the strips of spruce root look like. This roll is not ready to be used yet. It will be soaked 
and then chewed before it is used. You cannot be without these kinds of tools and materials when you are making a fish trap. The wood must be tough but also pliable. When you make one for the first time, it will be hard, and then the next time it will get easier, and pretty soon it will be very easy. Andrew Chikoyak's trap location has been productive for many years. When locating a blackfish trap site, one uses an understanding of blackfish that is passed from generation to generation. When you are on the river at a possible blackfish trap site, you check the depth of the water that flows under the ice. If it is a good location, there will be between one and two feet of water flowing under the ice. If there is any less, the site is not good because the ice can freeze all the way to the bottom. The trap is set near the bank in such a way that the fish are funneled into it. If there is too much space between the bank and the trap, many fish will escape. The traditional wooden trap is used most often by the Tundra village people. The metal and wire traps that were experimented with some years back become too soft after one season. Some people feel that they don't hold as many fish as the wooden traps.
Changi Changi Waka Knatting Kwa Mokhtun Makutun Changi Tamskata Makutalu at me Fila Hat Unokokan Amtasu Changi Waka Nepaka Kata Ilikun Hanami Masoni Hospinayuni Takokluki Asi Katoi Tamakam Yut Changi if there are a lot of fish being caught, the traps are checked every day. If the catch is small, the trap will be checked every two or three days. The tundra people like blackfish. When winter comes, men go out to catch the fish and remember when they were boys and their elders taught them to be good fish catchers.